What is a supplement? In simple terms, it's something that you take alongside your normal food that will help your overall well-being and also to make sure that your body meets its nutritional demands. So in this video, we're going to be going into a little more detail as to exactly what a supplement is and then covering my top picks that can help enhance your training and your performance. You might already be taking supplements and not even know it because say for example, you're having a protein bar as a mid-morning snack or maybe when you wake up in the morning, you have your vitamin drink or you head home from training and you've got a milkshake with some fortified vitamins, then you are already supplementing your diet. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be having a pill that you've bought from the chemist, for example, or a sports drink that you've actually gone to a specific sports shop to buy, although that is another whole industry in itself. With such a huge array of supplements on offer and manufacturers trying to convince you that it's their product that you need, it can end up being a complete and utter minefield. So how do you know if you actually need to take a supplement? Well, that's a tough question. And in the ideal world, you go and have a blood test and the results would clearly tell you. But realistically, that's not gonna be an option for most of us. So to a certain extent, it is a matter of trial and error. Start by looking at your diet. If you have a normal, healthy, balanced diet with plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables and you just do a small amount of exercise, then there should be no reason that you need to supplement that. However, if you are, say, putting your body through a lot of stress, training for maybe an Ironman, or you're someone who is aware that you don't get that good balance of food in your diet, then supplements could help you meet those nutritional needs. And it's worth noting that if you're on a vegetarian or vegan diet, you will be missing out on certain nutrients. And even if you're gluten free, you're gonna be missing out on some of the fortification that you find in flour. So as I've already touched on, there are so many supplements out there to choose from. In today's video, I have chosen just five that will help with some of the more common nutritional deficits found in athletes. So let's take a look. First up, we've got omega-3 or fish oils. And the name is interchangeable because high levels of omega-3 are found in fish oils. And fish oils themselves are a natural way to get a high dosage of this nutrient. So as you'd expect, oily fish such as tuna, salmon, herring, mackerel, all have high levels of omega-3. And it's suggested that you do have two portions per week. If however you don't eat fish, then there's things such as flax seeds, walnuts, dark leafy greens will also help you top up that nutrient. So why are fish oils so often talked about? Well, they are essential for brain, heart, eye health. They make sure that your nails aren't brittle, your skin isn't dry. And if you've got low levels, you might also find that you're having problems sleeping, you're irritable, or you've got mood swings. And omega-3 is also important in immunity, and that's another really key point if you're training for a triathlon. And as with all of these nutrients, if you can consume them through food, then you'll get the most positive impact on your health. But if you do need to have a supplement, then you can use these fish oil tablets, but just make sure that you do check the dose first and build up slowly so that your gut has got time to react. Vitamin D is created naturally in our bodies as a result of having direct sunlight. That is, if you're lucky enough to actually find any. And it's needed to have healthy bones because it allows your body to absorb calcium and phosphate, both of which are essential for repairing and rebuilding your bones. And if you don't have enough, then that can lead to weak bones. So you might have heard of something called rickets, but at the severe end of the spectrum, it could lead to a stress reaction and even stress fractures. And it's worth noting that your body requires adequate levels of magnesium in order to be able to metabolize vitamin D but with a healthy balanced diet that shouldn't be a problem. Obviously we can't all always get enough natural sunlight especially if you live in a climate like we do here in the UK and different skin colours will absorb sunlight and vitamin D at different rates and also if you're wearing an SPF sun cream factor then that's going to cancel out any absorption of vitamin D. Now you can get small amounts from oily fish, red meat and eggs but quite often supplementation is going to be required. So a recommended daily allowance is actually 10 micrograms of vitamin D a day but that's only when there's not adequate sunshine although having said that for athletes it's actually recommended that a dose of up to 25 micrograms can be useful because of the extra stress that you're putting on your body and the IOC the International Olympic Committee even recommend that athletes consider using vitamin D if they're not getting enough sunlight and as well as bone stress it actually helps importantly for the immune system so again another key point if you are training for a triathlon
But before heading back inside, I thought I'd come and grab a coffee, partly because I need a caffeine hit, but it might seem a bit left field, but this is a supplement as you have it outside of your normal meal. And if used wisely, it can actually give a massive performance benefit to both your training and your racing. So much so that up until 2004, in some Olympic sports, it was actually on the banned list. If you're not a fan of tea or coffee, you can find caffeine in gels, soft drinks such as cola, Red Bull, a lot of sports energy drinks, and of course, caffeine tablets. But if you are gonna use caffeine, make sure you practice with it before race days. It can give you some GI issues and it is a mild diuretic. And also remember, obviously, it's a stimulant. So if you're gonna use it before your evening training session, just remember, you might struggle to sleep afterwards. Well, one thing that actually surprised me is the amount of caffeine that you need to be able to experience that real benefit. Now, it's recommended that you need around three micrograms of caffeine per kilo of body weight. So for me, that would equate to around 180 micrograms of caffeine. But the difficulty comes with knowing how much caffeine is in, say, something like this latte. But if you do want to measure it exactly, you're probably best to use tablets, and then you know the exact dose. And if you've already experimented with caffeine or coffee, and you know what works for you, then the recommended upper dose is five or six micrograms per kilo of body weight. Anyway, enough about caffeine. I think I need to finish this coffee and probably head back inside. Ah, right, so on to whey protein. Now, as endurance athletes, you need between 1.2 and 1.6 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. For, for someone of my size, I need roughly between 90 and 100 grams of protein. Now that might just sound like numbers to you, but to give you an idea, a small, well, an average sized chicken breast weighs in at about 30 grams of protein. So if you're not a vegetarian and you eat a normal diet, you're probably gonna reach those protein levels quite naturally. That said, protein is essential for muscles to repair and to get stronger. And whey protein is an easy way to top this up. So it's actually derived from milk when it gets separated into cheese and then the liquid that's left over is the whey. That is then processed to become a powder. And it's full of essential amino acids that are needed for that muscle repair, that muscle growth. And on top of this, it's very easy and quick to absorb as a protein. Well, it is easy to get obsessed with making sure that you have enough protein, but it's worth noting that your body can only digest and absorb a certain amount. And that's suggested at being around two grams per kilo of body weight. And if you exceed this, then all it's gonna do is make your kidneys work harder to process it and basically excrete it through your urine. Whey protein and protein powders like these are now pretty easy to find. You can get them in your local sports shop or your health food shop. But the thing to note is contamination. A lot of these products are made in factories where banned substances might be made as well, but we'll be covering a little bit more on that later on. Iron deficiency anemia is more common in female athletes and in adolescents and can represent as general weakness and fatigue. Now iron is essential for your body to be able to make red blood cells, which in turn are needed to be able to carry oxygen around your body. So it's pretty vital. On the plus side, there are so many ways in which you can get iron into your diet naturally. Anything from red meat to shellfish, chicken, salmon, soybeans, lentils, raisins, dried apricots, dark leafy greens, the list goes on, but it is worth noting that actually you do require vitamin C for your body to be able to absorb the iron. So for example, having a dark green leafy salad with some lemon juice or a lemon type dressing would be a great way to do this. And there are a few things that can actually inhibit your iron absorption, such as tea and coffee, Coffee, so try to avoid drinking tea and coffee at the same time as having an iron rich meal. And also stress interestingly can affect your absorption. So say you've done a really hard training session, it's actually a good idea to wait four or five hours before you're having your iron rich meal. Iron as an actual supplement is only recommended if you've been to a doctor or you've had a blood test to show that you are deficient in iron because iron tablets can actually cause side effects and digestion issues. Okay, I'm by no means saying that you need to go out after watching this video and buy all of these supplements. I chose these five as as these could potentially help improve your triathlon performance in your training and racing only if you don't get the adequate amounts of nutrition in your diet naturally. Right, it's also important to note the recommended daily allowance for whatever supplement you're using and not to supersede this. And also to note that as athletes, we're responsible for whatever it is that we ingest. So make sure that you check that that supplement is allowed in your sport. Finally, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of concentrating on having a healthy balanced diet full of whole grains, lean proteins, vegetables, healthy unsaturated fats before you start looking into the supplement route. 
But if you've enjoyed this, hit the thumb up button to like it. And if you want to get all of our videos from GTN without missing any more, hit the globe to subscribe. And then if you want some tips on how to lose weight as a triathlete, made a video on that just here. And if you want to see what the pros eat for breakfast on race day, we did an Ask the Pros video and that's here.